Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, chat. We got a big show for y'all today. I'm really excited. Um, I've been waiting to have this guest on for weeks. We've been planning it out. He's finally here. Uh, before we get into the show, I just want to say, if you want to be a part of the Players' Choice community, we say this all the time. Everything you need is below. Shout out to our GOAT members. Shout out to Comatose, Hermias, Dorian Clayton, Avion Plummer. If you want to be a part of Players' Choice community, all the information you need is below. And before we get into this interview, because I know y'all are ready, y'all stoked. Um, I'm stoked. I just want to say and I want to announce that on Monday, starting at 6 p 6 30 p.m. Eastern, Bama and I will be starting an open field on players' choice. Uh, it'll be a football-based show where the fans will be able to come talk to me and Bama, get off your takes, say what you want. But we'll be starting that next week. But without further ado, I would like to introduce to the Players' Choice community for his very first time on the platform, Rodney Stuckey. Welcome to the show, boss. What's good? <laughs> I appreciate you coming on the show, man. How have you been? Uh, I've been well. Um, man, just been blessed, man. You know, can't complain, you know. Um, A lot of basketball stuff going on right now for you. I know that. Yeah, absolutely, man. Just being busy, staying busy, you know, obviously, you know, retired and stuff like that. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still I'm still in the basketball community, still in the basketball mm -hmm. world. So, you know, just being busy with that. I love that. I love that. I love I love the fact that even post post your playing career, you still have your hand on the game. You know what I'm saying? I think that's that's amazing. But since we want to since we're talking about the beginning of this whole thing for you, this journey has been crazy for you. And I just want to get to the start. Every time the word Rodney Stuckey comes up in Seattle, the first thing I hear every time is Kentwood legend. Kentwood legend. Kentwood legend. The 2004, you want a state title. Um, what is, what was what has Seattle been like for you? What has Kentwood been like for you? You know, do you feel like Seattle basketball is is slept on? And what was that impact for you? Uh, man, I, I would say I, I would say like back in the day, I felt like Seattle basketball was definitely slept on, you know, mm -hmm. and then as the years, you know, gone by and stuff like that, um, you know, there's been a lot of cats that came out of this out of Seattle, right. out of the state of Washington, you know, and, uh, you know, I think it's only going to continue to keep happening that way. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, just see Paulo, you know, just did his thing this year um mm -hmm. rookie of the year and all that stuff um but even before him a lot a lot of other cats you know what i'm saying um mm -hmm. but um for me um you know i think uh you know kentwood uh well before kentwood you know mm -hmm. I, I lived in seattle you know i grew up in the skyway area okay um, uh, um if i would have stayed out that way i probably probably would have either went to rainer beach i mm -hmm. that was the closest high school to me right um, um but you know, due to some circumstances, you know what I'm saying. You got to <laughs> you got to remove yourself from from, yeah. from situations, you know. Right. So, you know, at the time, my mom thought it was a very idea, to, a very good idea to to move out, you know, south mm -hmm. and and you know and start start over, you know. Right. And um, you know, I've been in Kent ever since like my third grade. Mm -hmm. um, and when I got out here, it was definitely a culture shock. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Man, you know, being around, you know, your color of people and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you're going into a different, you know, it's it, it was, you know, nothing but, you know, white people, man. It, it was yeah. different, man. It was definitely right. different, you know. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I think it I think it definitely benefited me as far as, you know, it. I got to see different point of view, like different perspectives of right. of, just, of just life, you know. Um, right. And uh you know, it, I think it, it it all worked out, man. You know, I think yeah. God had a plan for me, and it all worked out. You know, yeah. I moved out here, moved to Kent, third grade. Mm -hmm. you know, I went to elementary, um, did my elementary school, my junior high school out here, and then boom, right. went to Kent, went to Kentwood High School. Um, and Kentwood for me, man, it was it was just a blessing, just because, um, you know, I, I I I surrounded myself with the right people. So going into my sophomore year. Um, there was this family, the Tallers, um, you know, at the time, you know, his, uh, Diane and Brent were, you know, they're my step parents, um, mm -hmm. their son, Matt Taller, who was a senior at the time when I was a sophomore, right. we were teammates. Um, we, uh, we became really close. Um, 
And then, uh, man, you know, they, they kind of, they kind of helped me and guided me through my high school career as I needed that mm-hmm. help. You know, my sophomore right. year, I was, you know, skipping school, you know, mm-hmm. you know, not doing the things I was supposed to do. Right. Um, got behind in my, my grades and all that stuff. Right. Um, and as I got into my junior year, you know, I made that decision to move in with, you know, uh, the taller, the taller family. Mm-hmm. Um, it really just kept me focused and dialed in and just helped me out, man. And it, and it got me on track, you right. know, obviously, um, you know, to, to stay focused, um, and potentially, you know, obviously go to Eastern Washington and play my basketball, but, you know, winning that state title, man, it was, it was definitely a blessing, you know, mm-hmm. actually the crazy thing about that was, um, um, that year, man, we lost in this, we lost in state to, mm-hmm. To, uh, Mount Tahoma High School, um, who had a squad too. Um, mm. So we lost to them. We were actually in the loser out game. I oh, really? Who, yeah, I forgot who it was against. Um, but we were down like 10, man, with like two minutes or so left to go in the game. And we came back and, and, and won it. So we right. <laughs> we almost didn't even make it to state that year, <laughs> which is a crazy thing. Um, so, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. No, go ahead. Oh, go yeah, ahead. Finish. Yeah, no, so, finish. You know, go ahead. Yeah, we made it to state. You know, first game was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, second game, it was pretty much like the finals. You know, we played Mount Tahoma again. Um, great game. We were down three with like, I want to say like seven seconds to go. Uh, mm-hmm. We called a timeout. We drew this play up. I uh, forgot who threw the ball into me. I turned around, did a, a fadeaway bank shot three off the off the glass to to tie it up, um, yeah. and then we went into overtime, and then we ended up winning it in overtime. And then after that, it was the rest was history, man. So we we uh, we definitely took the ship home, man. So it, it was great memories, man. <laughs> you're, you're immortalized, man. You're immortalized. And, and yeah. the thing is, the thing I find, but you know, just because you brought out like who you were when you were a sophomore versus versus now. If you are a sophomore, you have to look in the mirror and be like, you have to see what you where where you be, where you like your destination now. Would you would you have saw this? Like, did you see this? You know, in high school, no, I didn't see none of this coming at all, man. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to all you kids out there that that want to, you know, you know, obviously go to college and play basketball and potentially play in the NBA, man. This this stuff happens like a blur. It happens so quick. It comes mm-hmm. to you so fast. So, um, you know. I think, you know, for me, um, I didn't really know, you know, what was coming next after my high school career. You know, I knew I was going to go play my college basketball at Eastern, you know, right, right. Um, but I didn't I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was coming. <laughs> so when you got to Eastern, so when you got to Eastern, yep. at what uh, your, you came out your sophomore year? Yep, came out of my sophomore, your sophomore year. You're all American. You average 24 a game. So you went you absolutely went ballistic. Yep. When you first got there as a freshman, when did you come? When did it start coming together that like I I'm I can sniff the NBA like it is it is almost here like I can do this I think I can yeah, really I'll, do this. Yeah, good question, man. Um, so a little bit about my story too as well. So obviously coming out of high school, you know, I didn't qualify for the NCAA. Um, right. So at the time, you know, um, you know they had this program called you know Prop Proposition Forty Eight. I don't know if they still do that. Um, mm. But it allows you to just go to school and be a student for a year okay. Um, and to get your grade. You know, obviously, you got to show them that, you know, you, you know, you can uh, get good grades. And then it's pretty much you're like on academic probation for a year. You know, so you okay. got to go there, good, good grades for the year. And then the following year, you're able to play. So that's the route I had to I had to do when I was at Eastern. Um, right. But during that but during that year, though, my first year as my freshman year uh, school wise, you know, um, you know, I was. You know, the 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 thing is, is it allowed me to be a student. It allowed me to be me and allowed me to be a student first and foremost and mm. to really get out there and, and, and you know, have that experience of, of just being in college, you know. Right. Um, and I think that really just helped me because it I got all of it out of the way. You know, right. what I'm <laughs> you feel me? Just say hey, I have my, yeah. my first year, but at the same time, my yeah. first year. I was still, you know, they still had me working out. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I still had to do work, you know, workouts, weights, um, you know, study hall. Um, You know, I was still on that, on the program. You know, I still had to do all that stuff. Um, Obviously, I couldn't do it with the team, you know, but they, you know, obviously 
had a schedule for me. Um, but it just allowed me just to just to be myself my first year. And it also allowed me to to really just dial in and focus and prepare myself for the following year. OK, what's the speed of the game? How how do they play? Mm-hmm. You know, analyzing everything and and OK. Okay, I got the right. speed. Okay, right. okay, this guy. Okay, I'll see him next year. Okay, oh, he's good. Okay, just seeing like the competition and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I'll be. Oh yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, next year. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm ready for this. You know, so just having, so just being able to sit out that first year really just, man, I got my mind out in the, to know that next year I'm coming in and I'm I'm about to dominate. You know? How antsy were you though? Were there times where you were like, yo, I want to get on the court tomorrow? Like, how how did you manage like the? I would add so much anxiety. Especially if, like, you see guys like, yo, I will go out there and, you know, buses, you know what? You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, How did you deal with that? In the murals, man. <laughs> <laughs> For real, man. I, hey, I'm telling you, our my first year. What? Was out, there was, it was me and two other kids that had to sit out that year. Um, mm-hmm. And, um, and man, I'm telling you, our intramural games were packed. They were crazy. <laughs> like, all the students were coming to watch us. It was it was it was good times, man. So that's kind of how, like, you know, I, I I stayed sane, man. You know, just intramural basketball. It really helped, man. It was just fun, just hooping, um, just. Right, you know, you're not. You know, you're not right for that. That's man, unfair. You, that's right? unfair. That was so unfair. <laughs> it was fun though, man. It was so much fun. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh, I think you um, you might have lost it for a minute. Tech tech difficulty, real, real quick, chat. Uh oh. All good. Yeah. You're yeah, good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. All good. Yeah, but yeah, that kept me sane, man. And you know, mm-hmm. got through that first year, man. And like I said, it really just helped me just dial in and focus. And so then coming into my next year, mm-hmm. um, you know, one thing about me as a player, I've always been like an aggressive player, right? Yeah. So and that was never going to change. You know, I wasn't going to come in and defer to anybody. You know, I was just going to come in and do me. And, you know, the rest is going to have to, the rest of them are going to have to follow, you know. Right, right. And, and that that's pretty much having a mindset like that and having a coach that allowed me to have that mindset and allow me to do the things, you know, I was, I was capable of doing um, really benefited me, you know. And that's right. one of the things these kids have to understand as they're going through this process of trying to pick a school, mm-hmm. um, you know, don't go to the school just because it has a big name, right? right. You, need, you need to go to a school where these coaches are going to allow you to go hoop and showcase your skills, right? Because you can go to Kentucky if you want, right? Right. I mean, are they going to let you do what you what you do? You know, are you going to be able to shoot 15, 16, 17 shots a game? All right. You know, so I think, you know, just finding a school that allows you to do that and allows you to play your game and gives you that opportunity and that platform, man, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a green light, man. And that's, that's what Eastern allowed me to do. I mean, you average 24 in college. That's still not easy though. Even oh, getting 15 shots, 24 in college, you only get two halves, one, you know what I'm saying? So even, yeah, like, that's still incredible. Like, was that just, do you think that year, obviously, was there just a something about, like, you was, like, letting everything go, everything you had to wait on? Was it just all coming out that season? Like, um, Man, it was just, I always say, just taking advantage of my opportunity, bro. Like, you know, and, I wasn't, <laughs> I like and, the, and the same thing is the same time, I wasn't shooting 25, 20 shots a game. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, you know, I was getting to the free throw line. You know, I was, you know, uh, you know, just being aggressive, you know, getting my buckets and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, um, but I, you know, I, it, it just, it just came natural to me, man. Right. And it just, the game was just, I, it, it slowed down for me and I just, yeah, you know, I was able to just do whatever I wanted to do out there on the court, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like, like I said, it was, if it wasn't for my coaches allowing me to have that, that platform, you know, right. it'd be different. So they, they definitely believed in me and believed in my abilities, man. So I try to go out there and just, you know, do the best I can. Did you uh did you did you did you almost pull a Carmelo Anthony and want to stay and your coach had to say you gotta go? Did you have one of those moments? Absolutely. <laughs> um so I would say, you know, my first year 
you know, had had a um, awesome year. Um, started the season, you know, obviously didn't really see any scouts um, mm-hmm. as the season went on. And as I started doing my thing, you know, my assistant coach, Carl Howe, who's like my right hand man, love that dude. Um, you know, he would come up to me, hey, man, you had like eight scouts in the game or eight scouts at the game watching you. I was like, oh, damn, really? It's like, yeah. You know, I, I don't pay attention to none of that stuff. Right. He would tell me after the games and stuff like that. Right, you know? right. Hey, you had 15 today. Like, oh, dang, really? Right. Like, yeah. You know, um, so my soft, my freshman, my freshman year basketball wise, I didn't really see the scouts because they, they were just sitting in the stands and doing right. all stuff. And then, um, you know, as, as I started going into my sophomore year, that's when they started all right, sitting Front First row, yeah. front row, right there. Uh, t- uh, tables are out and all that With stuff. With a pen and, and paper. It, yeah. And then I'm, I see them. You know what I'm saying? So it was right. my sophomore year. It was just a different story. I was like, mm-hmm. God damn. But it was, it was a cool thing to see. You know. But mm-hmm. then I knew, I just knew my, I knew my sophomore year. I had an opportunity to, right. to go to the league. Once the season was over, my, my coach, uh, my assistant coach Carl Howe, he was like, man. I mean, Shit, they're project- they're projecting you going top fifteen pick, you know, right. fifteen pick. Like, I mean, there's no reason for you to come back to college. You gotta go. You like, gotta go. <laughs> you gotta, you know, you you gotta go when your when your stock is hot. You know what I'm saying? So you you gotta go. Yeah, so no, man, I understand. Definitely was a it was it was an easy decision for me though. You can't you can't I mean you can't leave that you can't leave it on the table. You know what I'm saying? Right. You just never know what happens. But my my question to you too is so like John Morant, yeah. I think the game for him that put him on the map as a national prospect in college was when he played against Alabama. Absolutely. I think that Alabama game set the the noise for what he was going to be down the road. What about you? Was there a game you think you played and maybe you don't, could maybe not have been, uh, been uh, televised or at the time. I don't, I don't know who may have been on your schedule, but was there a game you think happened that this is might be, this is, this might spark the NBA interest. Like did you snap versus somebody that you I want to remember? Man, I want to say it was, I think it was my first conference game in the big sky. My, my freshman year, I think I dropped like 45 against uh, Northern Arizona. Um, and, uh, man, I would probably say that was probably like my, like, okay, I'm here type yeah. moment. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, okay, yeah. I got this. Like, I can... I can handle this. I can do this type ordeal, you know. And then I think after that, man, it just it was just like a domino effect, right? You again, you don't. It just happens organically, yeah. man. Yeah. This stuff just happens organically because I really wasn't even focusing on the NBA. I wasn't even thinking about that, you know. Right. But then as my coach started, hey, yeah, scouts at the game. You got this <laughs> scout, you got this scout. I'm like, what? This is crazy. But then my sophomore year, it just, it was just okay. I have a chance now, like. Mm-hmm. This is it. That's amazing. That is amazing. Honestly, forty-five in college is crazy, Rodney. I just want you to know, yeah. like that's that's crazy to do that in college, man. Um, so you get drafted. Did you know you were going to Detroit, or was there other teams where you like, ah, I might go here, might go there? How many um, workouts did you have? Yeah, man. Good question, man. So workout wise, so I went to the combine. Obviously, mm-hmm. I went to the combine. I didn't have to like play or do anything and like that. I just had to do like the agility and like, you know, all that kind of stuff, do interviews and stuff with, uh, with teams and stuff like that. So leaving the combine, uh, Detroit was my first workout. Mm. Um, the Pistons, um, I had a really good workout with them. My first, first workout. Um, and, uh, you know, they told me, Hey, if you're, if you, if you're at number 15 pick, we're, we're going to, we're, we're dropping you. you. We're taking you. Um, so I knew that, you know, so, um, I just knew like 15, all the teams 15 and up, I had to work out for all the 15 is that. And after I didn't really have to, right. I didn't have to work out for, um, but I did do probably maybe like seven or eight workouts. I would, I think I don't really, mm-hmm. I can't mine's, that was so long ago. <laughs> but I think it was about like seven, seven to like eight workouts I did. I worked out for like the Sonics, the Clippers, mm-hmm. the Atlanta Hawks, the Sacramento Kings, the Phoenix Suns, which was my worst workout. 
<laughs> man, what I remember it? that. The songs Phoenix. was your worst work. Was oh, your worst the worst work? by <laughs> far, man. Oh my god, I I remember that, man. It's, I mean, obviously we're in Phoenix, right? Uh, Don't tell me it was outside. No, not outside. Oh, but we're oh. we're we're in a gym with like no AC, bro. It was hot, bro. I was, couldn't breathe, man. I was struggling, man. It was one of the worst ones I've I've done, but um, I remember that. Um, Wow. I was in there with like Jared Dudley. Um I I, nice. I just I remember that workout though, but it was it was my worst one. Um but I worked out with like Miami Heat. Mm -hmm. Uh but I just, you know, I I didn't know, man, because I had a really good workout with Sacramento. I had a really good okay. workout with Atlanta. Um, you know, she uh the Clippers I had a really good workout. So you really just don't know. It just all depends on what, you know, what these GMs and what these teams like, you know. So but I just yeah. knew if I landed at 15. I was I was going to Detroit, you know. And then obviously, you know that happened. So you went to a you got drafted to a team that was was heavy with with veterans, fresh yeah. over championship. Like yeah, the Chauncey Billups, Rasheed Wallace. And, you know, I'm a UConn guy, UConn yeah. favorite, Rich yeah. Hamilton. Yeah. What what was having those guys like as vets, man? You had some you had some great vets to start your career. Oh man, they were the best, man. Like wow, I like. Uh, I wouldn't want it any other way, you know, just going into that situation. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people think, you know, you, you get to a team and it's all like this rookie hazing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, man, they didn't do none of that to me, man. They just, mm -hmm. they just treated me just, just like a regular person. You know, obviously they had me do some things, you know, um, you know, and I did them, you know, obviously you, mm -hmm. everyone has rookie duties and stuff like Max. that, you know? Max. Um, but man, you know, they were just, they were just ideal, man. It, they were just the situation you want to go into. That's the situation you want to go into. Um, right. They want to. They were teaching me, you know, uh, just the ropes, you know, um, uh, just about everything on and off the court, you right. know. Um, and the biggest thing that stuck to me is, you know, all those cats were just always a young buck. That's used to what they always call me, young buck, a young buck. Mm -hmm. Save your, save your money. You right, <laughs> like I'm so. Can, you, I, can I just can I just interrupt <laughs> real quick? Because I do want to yeah. tell the chat when I first met Rodney, you would not know that Rodney played in the NBA. I want everybody in the chat to know that Rodney was wearing a regular sweatsuit, some regular kicks. They ain't have a bust down watch on. He keeps it very modest. And did you learn that from your vets? Is that what they told you? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hey, young buck, save your money, man. You don't need to be out here. You know, having all these houses, these cars, all these jewelry, all this jewelry and all that stuff, man. You don't need none of that stuff, man. Save your money. You know, um, this is this is about longevity, you know, um, and that's that's one thing that always just like, you know, you know, stuck with me. You know, and I think one thing that also stuck with me, too, as well is, you know, you cannot be afraid of saying no. You know, right. um, you know, now you're going to have people coming at you different you know, different views, different area, you know, different ways and stuff like that, man. But, you know, you just got to make sure that, you know, you got to say no. If you don't, if you don't want to do it, no, you know, did so. The, did go you ahead. just go through survivor's remorse a bit at times? Oh, 100 percent, man, without a doubt. You know, you, you it, I mean, when you're, you know, when you, when you're getting millions and millions of dollars, man, and, you know, people don't, people think their perspectives are different. You know, right. they think that like, oh, since he made it, like we made it, you know, and it's not, it's not like that, man. You know, it's just because I'm in the position I'm in, like, I'm the one that's getting up at 5 a.m. running lines and doing all this conditioning. I'm the one that's getting up, pitting all these shots, pitting up all these shots, getting this work in, doing all this other stuff, man. Like, wow. That's, that's, so how, true. that's how I see it. Right. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. yeah, I got to take care of some of my people. It's like, you know, my mom's first yeah. and foremost. But obviously, she, yeah. She, you know, she's, she's always good. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah, um, of course. Um, and my kids, like, they're always going to be good and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know? Um, but man, you know, I, I think, you know, just for me, it's just being able to, to say no but also having those veteran guys, Rip, Tayshawn, Rasheed Wallace, and Antonio McDyess, Tayshawn Prince, mm -hmm. uh, Lindsey Hunter, 
man, all them cats, man, like, right. man, those guys were just such a big part of my career, man, and just helping me, you know, you know, set those stones in place to where, you right. know, longevity, man, that's what it's about, longevity. I love that. So Draymond Green spoke about there being an issue with veterans now in the NBA. He feels mm -hmm. like there is a, it is at an all-time high that there is a lack of veteran presence in these Correct. locker rooms. And yeah. I think one, it becomes some of these teams that are tanking for draft picks ultimately feel like we got to keep this team young because we got to be, we got to really focus on losing games and, mm -hmm. you know, getting more picks to get this capital. Um, do you think that's going to change or you think that is going to start becoming a trend? Because I do feel like some of these teams, you know, and Draymond used Tristan Thompson as an example, and I kind of, and I felt him a lot on it just because Tristan's won a championship. You know, he's been, he's played in heavy locker rooms. He's played a lot of big time minutes. Mm -hmm. I think a Jalen Duran would love, would be, would benefit greatly from just having that type of mentor in the locker room. So do you think that's, they're trying to like, do you think there's becoming a, they pushing the veteran out of the locker room right now in the NBA? Um, you know, I, I see that, right? I, I see that that's the way it's going, you know, for for what reason? I don't know. You know, usually, obviously, when I was playing, you know, I felt like each team always had that, like, veteran mm -hmm. person on their squad, right? right. Um, um, you look at it, I mean, obviously, Golden State had uh, – um, Andre Iguodala, right this year, right to, mm -hmm. to try to be, you know to be their veteran. Um, I think it benefits these young cats, man. You know, if you go into if you're going if you're going into a team that has all young players and they don't have, you know, that veteran presence to you know show them the ropes, right. man. It, you know, I mean, you can kind of see. You can kind of see what happens. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got these 18, whatever, 19, 20 year old kids, you know, coming fresh into the league or, you know, been in the league for a couple of years, 20, 21 year old kids, um, you know, making millions of dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you really don't have that kind of role model to show you the ropes, man. It, it, right. it can, you know, it can go either way, you know, but, you know, having that presence, man, can really benefit, man, and, and having that voice and, Having that yeah. leader, someone can, someone that you can follow, you know what I'm saying? It, it really bene it benefits uh, the process, absolutely. And I think now, too, with, with the NIL, you know, these young players are coming into the league with a million dollars in their bank account. Correct. Before they sign their NBA contract, you know what I'm saying? Man, I, I think... wish it was like that back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Man, dang. How, how many commercials, how many local commercials you would have did if Man, you could? I... Man, for real, man, that, it'd be different. That's crazy. Yeah, I think I think it's absolutely insane. So I do want to get into some of your business ventures, but yeah. the thing, I did get some questions from fans, uh, and I thought some of them were pretty funny. So I wanted, so let's see what you think. And one one yeah. of the questions was, uh, what 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 moment gave you more more? Uh, what did you feel better about crossing up Kobe or crossing up AI? Because <laughs> you dropped AI, so. man. Uh, both, man. They're both legends, right? Mm -hmm. Um, RIP to, to one of the goats, Kobe, right. you know, um, but you know, both, both legends though, you know, I, I respect right. them both. You, you had the opportunity to play with AI, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I did, man. Um, great dude, man. Great, great human being, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, AI is AI, man. He's a legend, you know, right. um, and He's, he's just a hooper, you know, obviously, you know, uh, you know, as, as for, as for us, you know, Detroit, man, when that whole, th that whole thing went down, when they traded Chauncey, man, it was just a very eye opening, mm -hmm. uh, shocking s situation that happened. And it really just, it was a domino effect on the whole organization, you know, right. and that's when everything started, you know, obviously going downhill. I think we started like 4-0, 5-0 that year. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden, you know, we did a trade to bring in Iverson. And man, you know, it's just, you know, Chauncey and Iverson are just two different individuals, right? Two different right. people. Um, um, and, uh, it, you know, it was just a, a different situation. Um, yeah. But, you know, sh you know, stuff happens, man. It is what it is, man. You just got to yeah. just keep rolling with the punches, though. 
But did that make Iverson, as a young Iverson, player? Oh, my bad. Iverson, great dude, phone. man. Love him. Yeah. If he wanted to, hey, I was ready to give up my, my jersey, my number three jersey off my back uh, at the time. Uh, the commissioner uh, stopped it, though. Hey, Wale said you wasn't taking that three off. That's oh, what Wale I was, said. No, I was taking it off, man. I already <laughs> told AI. I was like, bro, you can have this, dog. You a legend. Man. You All can, right, so you can clear it up right now, Roddy. For clear it up. Clear it up right now. Clear it up right taking, now. I was giving him that jersey, um, and then uh, commissioner said that we couldn't do it just because of uh, – I think it was like, you know, they already like were making jerseys number three and, and you know, in my name and stuff like that. So it mess up just like the merchandise and all that kind of right. stuff. So it was just a whole big deal with that. But, man, if if Iverson wanted that jersey, he was getting it. <laughs> yep. I love that. I love that, bro. That's respect. Respect. I love that. So you decided to during in 2019, you opened up. You, un, you opened up your own facility, Shoe 360. Um, and obviously you had to deal with COVID. It, it, it shut down, it reopened. When did the idea of Shoe 360 come about where you was like, I want to make a facility where I can have high school, college, elementary school. You could develop the, the next generation of basketball players. What inspired that? Um, yeah, man, good question. I would say, so that all came apart and... Um... In 2017, so my last year when I was playing with the Pacers, I hosted a Thanksgiving event. Um, mm -hmm. And Fred Jones, who went to the University of Oregon, mm -hmm. um, um, he played his he played NBA basketball with the Pacers. Um, he opened up a location out in Indiana. Right. And uh, he would always be around our games and come to our events and help out and do those kind of things. Um, and then he was just – Hey, stuck, man, you got to come check this facility out. It's called Shoot 360. It's crazy. Like, there's nothing like it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, bet. Like, I'll, I'll get out there at some point. But obviously, with my schedule and stuff being busy, just never really had the opportunity to, you know, to get out there. Um, so after when I was done playing, um, you know, then again, it's like, okay, what do I, what's my next step in, you know, in my life? Like, what do I want to do? What's the next step? Mm -hmm. um, so I always just remember shoot 360, shoot 360. So I was talking to my financial advisor, we researched it, looked it up. He was like, wow, this is crazy. There's nothing like this. This is unbelievable. So reached out to the CEO of the company, uh, got connected with him, flew out to LA to check out the facility. I was like, wow, I got to bring one of these back home to Washington yeah. and man made it happen. Um, we opened up December of 2019. And then obviously, what, January, February, March, I want to say somewhere around there. I think that's when like COVID hit. Right, right. And then, and then we had a shutdown, man. Um, you know, but thankfully, you know, I was able to survive all that. Um, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, things are things are good, man. Can't complain. That's awesome. That's awesome. So are you one of those coaches that like, how? what type of motivator are you, Rodney? Like, are you one of those, like, are you are you the master manipulator? Push the right buttons. Are you put the arm around the shoulder? What type of what type of teacher are you? Um, I'm more like you know I I try to you know one one thing is like you know um, I coach girls. You know I have a girls program. Right. Um, and you know one thing that you can't do is you can't talk the same way like you talk to boys to girls. Yeah. Um. You know, so it's more of trying to, you know, motivate. But at the same time, I'm still going to get on you, right? Right, right. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's trying to motivate them and let them know that they're, you know, capable of going out there, just, you know, doing the things that, you know, I'm teaching them to do, you know. But at the same time, yeah. if you're messing up, I'm going to get on you and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know about that, you know. Um, so I think there's a balance, you know, but, you know, I try to be – Definitely try to be positive, um, you know, just being involved in this AAU world and mm -hmm. this whole thing, man, they're, yeah. they're all, you see all these, these coaches out there, man, that just be yelling and screaming and degrading yeah. kids, man. Oh, it's, I don't, I just don't like it. You know, yeah. I, I don't like, I don't like seeing that. Right. There's, there's way that there's ways that you can get your message across, you know, without, yeah. You know, degrading or pitting these kids down, you know, it's it's a confidence 
you got to build wow. these, you got to, wow. you got to, you got to build the confidence up, man, in, in order yeah. for these kids to be out there to, to, to do their best out there on the court, you know? So that's what it's all about. No, I agree. I think sometimes too, like, you know, for those out, even in the chat, you know, coaches don't realize sometimes, especially in like that high school to college uh, level, you can really take the snatch, the love of the game out of a kid. Absolutely. Which is how you treat them. And I don't think, you know, they, I don't even think they think about that. Like what you're saying to this kid, he going back home and still thinking about what you're saying to him. He or Absolutely. she, is, they are both here. She are still there literally crucifying himself because of the coaching you gave them. So, you know, that's something to think about. I love that you brought that up. I, th I think that's a, a big topic that doesn't get talked about enough. And I love that you, you highlighted it. Um, so the city of Detroit, Kay Cunningham is, Detroit is trying to get back to prominence. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Kay Cunningham, it's on you, kid. That is what they drafted you to be. What do you think of his game? And do you think he'll be able to shoulder the burden of making Detroit a, a, a basketball power again? Oh, absolutely, man. You know, anything's possible. You know, um, they definitely got a couple of young cats over there are talented, you know, Cunningham, mm -hmm. or Ivy, right? Yep, Ivy. Um, you know, I, I feel like those two right there can definitely, you know, as you know, they continue to keep – you know, off season continue to keep getting better and, and developing their game and getting stronger and you know, um, you know, the sky's the limit, man. And then also, yeah. you know, you know, you know, with Detroit, you just gotta keep rebuilding through the draft. You know, mm -hmm. keep keep finding these young cats that you can, you know, that you can, you know, mesh. You know, these guys can mesh with each other and grow with each other. That's the biggest thing is trying to keep the the young core with each other where they can just you know grow with each other and develop that chemistry and all that stuff, you know, but, you know, you know, hopefully, you know, Detroit can get, definitely get back on top, you know, mm -hmm. um, great, great ownership there, you know, um, and definitely great people. I love Detroit, man. Like, mm -hmm. slept I, on city. you think it's a slept on oh, city? Off top, off top, yeah. slept on, you know, um, obviously when I was playing, you know, uh, we played out in the suburbs, you know, mm -hmm. Auburn Hill, um, but man, I I got nothing but love for Detroit. Uh, yeah. Great food, great restaurants. Uh, you know, nightlife is good. You know, yeah. Um, but definitely good vibes. Great shopping. That. Great shopping. It was good vibes in Detroit. I love it. Did you have a Did you have a pair of buffs? Did you have You had a pair of buffs. I know you had I, one pair of buffs. <laughs> you know, I did, man. Even though, hey, let me. Great love, like I said, love Detroit. And the man, them winners there, whoo. <laughs> man, that is something that I don't miss. That, that cold, man. But yeah. you know, you, you get used to it though. You get used to it. Uh the errors, the this era versus the era you played in. What do you think is the biggest difference and the biggest difference? And do you and what do you implement in like your kids because the errors are different? This is analytics, man, right? Like mm -hmm. everything is numbers now. Like all right. Basketball, basketball over basketball. Yeah, you know, it's like, okay, let's shoot threes, either threes or layups, right? None in between, you know. I feel like, you know, teams don't want people shooting, like, the mid-range jump shots and all that stuff. Man, that's – the. you know, when I was hooping, man, those those shots were always there. You know, those right. were the shots that were, that were there, you know, looking for your mid-range. Rip Hamilton? I mean, look at him, bro, coming off screens, yeah. mid-range, you know. One or two dribble pull ups, mid range. That's 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 how that's he was living off that, cooking off that, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I just think like just you know the number wise, I think that's just analytics is you know kind of messing it up. You know, mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, you just got to hoop and you got to play basketball and you got to take the best shot that's given to you, no matter what. Right. If it's a layup, if it's a post up, if it's a mid range, if it's a three pointer, whatever it is. You know, you just got to be able to take it, you know. Um, but now it's just, you know, they want people to spread the floor and shoot threes or, you know, I, I think that's just the biggest difference, man. Right. Do you um do you feel like we are the, the way the game is now kind of affects like how the youth play the game? Like you think kids are being more taught to take bad shots now because of the three being kind of like that's like the NBA now. Like if you can't shoot it from deep, it's like you can't win. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. how do you think that affects the youth? Uh, I, yeah, I think they just – I think they're focusing more on trying to teach those things to the youth, right, just making mm -hmm. sure as they, you know, get ready for 
you know, potentially, you know, NBA combine and, you know, potentially going to the NBA. Hey, these are things, you know, we got it. This is what you have to do in order to, to get drafted or, you know, to make the NBA. So we got to just focus on these things. You know, I, I feel like college doesn't really, mm-hmm. college is, is college. They do their own thing. You know what right. I'm saying? They're not, right. you know, they just run, they do their, run their offense, do, you know, do whatever they want to do, you know? Um, but I think, um, you know, obviously the, you know, if you're one of the top kids and stuff like that, yeah, you definitely got to start transitioning and right and into that I mindset agree. of, hey, this is this is how NBA is going to be. You know, you you probably were a scorer in college, you know, but hey, in the NBA, yeah. it might be different, man. You know, you got to just hey, the biggest thing is when you get to the NBA, you got to play your role, know your role, mm-hmm. right? Right. Because you, know, you come in and you average twenty five or twenty some points. Some some kids may not be able to do that. You know, you might not. That's not probably not going to be your role. You know, you might have to adjust, you know. So just being able to play your role and to and adjust to your situation. Mm-hmm. Longevity. Right. That's what it's all about. Longevity. You know, longevity. man, that's that's what it is, man. It's about being able to have a 401k, being able to to have a pension plan, being able mm-hmm. to have free health care. You know, but it's longevity. That's you right. gotta at the end of the day, it's a business. And what the NBA does, they treat you like a business, right? Right, right. They don't want you, what they're gonna do. They're you gonna don't trade you, get ready. They wave you whatever you want, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So as long as you go in and you you know, you're being professional, um, you're on time, you know, you're working hard, um, you're coachable, you know, you're doing all the little things and you and, and you know. Um, sky's the limit, and yeah. it's all about longevity. You heard what he said, y'all. This is a this is somebody who averaged 24 points in college. You understand? Like he was a this in he had to change his game to fit the fit the needs of the team. So that's life too. Even in yeah, your job, absolutely. you know, you gotta adjust to be on a team. So I, I love that you're saying that. Um that 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 is big and just in the real world. Um, what are your so what are some of your favorite young players today, right now? And, and also, what is your take on this year's NBA playoffs? Yeah, I would say some of the young cats, man. I, Luca, um, Ja, uh, freaking Trey Young, um, uh, man. Paolo. Who's that? Paolo. Oh, Paolo, yeah. Um, man, Booker. Um, <laughs> Man, just all these cats, man. Everyone's just so athletic now and jumping out of the, the gym. It's just crazy, bro. It's it's unreal. Right. I even like watching Austin uh Austin Reeves, man. You know, he's got game, you know. Um just overall, I think the NBA is definitely changing, right? You you you, you kind of see like, you know, obviously back in the day it was like the same teams that were always making it to the finals and all yeah. that stuff. But now yeah. you see, you know, now you got Denver. You know, obviously, you know, you still got Boston in their own core with Jason Tatum and, you know, and Brown and all those, you know, those those great those great players. Um, um, but, man, it's just it's, it's great to see these different teams that are always coming out of the blue every year and, you know, just making their stamp. You know, that's yeah. that that's huge, man. And uh, Denver's going to be tough to beat, man, you mm-hmm. know. And I feel mm-hmm. like every year they've been like knocking on the door, right? They've always been, been mm-hmm. there. And now they finally, they figured it out. You they know, got they Shaq and Kobe, man. Yep, yep. And they figured it out, man. And you know, it's it's been working. And you know, Jokic is just unbelievable. Like he's just unstoppable. Is he the best in the world for you right now? Uh, best in the world. Who's the best uh, in the world right now? Man, best in the world. Man, I I'm. Uh, it's Bron, man. Oh, oh, let me chill out. Let me chill out. Let me chill out. Because the I'm chat's going to go. I, I want you to understand. You know, the chat is about to go crazy because I know. Just that. I know. I, I get it, man. I But to be doing that for 20 years, like, he's, he's, still, here first. he's still the best, man. Like, he's he's out there dominating, doing this 20 years, 20 plus, like, about to be 20 plus years next year, you know? And, I mean, to me, until he leaves the game, then I'll, you know, I'll – Someone else would be the best, but for now it's it's Bron, you know. Who gonna dispute that, chat? Who y'all gonna dispute Ronnie Stuggy? Again, 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 him? again, right? Great players in the NBA, you know. 
love KD, love all these young cats, love Jokic. You know, I don't. One thing is, man, I don't. I don't hate. You know, um, but in my eyes, man, you know, Bron is Bron is Bron, man. He's still out here doing. He's still out here dominating. You know. Well, so, so what do you think about some of these people who say he's not a top ten player anymore? Or he's still not one of the ten. Do you think that is, or when you hear like Brian Windhorst say like he's hit the wall and things of that nature, do you just think this is propaganda, or is like, you know, or the narrative needs to change because he's been around so long? I think the narrative, you know, he's been around so long, so the narrative needs to change, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I think they just got to continue just to keep giving him his flowers until he's done, man. <laughs> you yeah, know, nah, facts, facts. I mean, uh, it's. That's just what it is. I mean, he's out. He's out there still dominating, still averaging twenty something. You know what I'm saying? And near twenty, yeah. like, who who does that? Like, 40, 40 putting up forty. Exactly. You know, like yeah. I get he may have slowed down a little bit, but man, he's still out there, still out there dominating. You know, I I I agree. Listen, I agree. I'm up here. I'm up here all the time trying to yeah. explain that, but it's better hearing it from you because you yeah. know. I mean, you've yeah. seen it. Like you've, you've seen it. Um. Before I let you go, Ronnie, there's two things I want to bring up to you. The first is this. Do you – I talked about it before you got on the show, but do you know you have one of the best 2K players of all time? <laughs> yeah? and, I, and I say this to you because there's a few there's a few players on 2K who are just incredible. Danny Granger, he was incredible <laughs> on 2K. J.R. Smith, probably a dead-eye sniper. His microwave archetype, his badge, he was incredible. Rodney Stuckey. 2016 2K, you were incredible. Do people tell you about this? Bro, I there are people that come up to me like, hey, bro, I used to play with you on 2K, man. You were crazy. You were so good. Um, I've heard bro. that a couple of times, man. But, man, to be honest with you, growing up, didn't own an Xbox, didn't own a PlayStation. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't a video gamer, man. So I never really got into, like, 2K and all that stuff, wow. man. I, I just really wasn't, not never got into video games, man. Never Bro, did. It was it was you, Gerald Green, and Danny Granger. Nobody understood it. Your 2K players were incredible, bro. Like you broke the mold for the game. You don't even you never probably even played with your own guy. Like yeah, that's incredible to me. Hey, let's go, man. I appreciate it. Who is that? Not, Ronnie at 2K? Yeah, tell Ronnie. Yeah, tell Ronnie, yo. Man, I appreciate it. Damn. Yeah, Ronnie gotta make you uh they, those people who be playing 2K like with the Pack, bro, you your card comes out in a pack. Yo, that Ronnie Stucky card is fire, bro. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm letting you know that the, the Gen Zs will let you know, bro. You were crazy in 2K and uh, certainly that's, good. That's good, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, um, so before the last thing I want to ask, obviously, yeah. is your top five, your Mount Rushmore, but we'll do we'll do your top five basketball all time. Ronnie Stucky's top five all time. Oh, damn. I'm just like, I have to go off the air that I know. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously, I don't know Kareem and, <laughs> you know, all these old cats, you know. But, right, right. I mean, like, my goat goat, like, my goat in my mm -hmm. eyes is MJ. Okay. Like, that is like, yeah, off top, he's number one. Um, just, I don't know, growing up for me, that was just like, mm -hmm. yeah, boom, yeah, he was just that guy. Uh, but I would say MJ, um, obviously Braun, it would be Kobe. Um, Steph is in my top five. Oh, nice. Um, I like it. And the last one. <sighs> And it's just so hard. Yeah. You, like, you know, you can throw Shaq in there. You can throw Tim Duncan. Um, Tim Duncan. Like, it's just, it's hard. But for you gotta sure. You got to give us one. You got to give us one. This is for the clip. We need one. Um, man. So tough, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can hurt somebody feelings. It's okay. Yeah, but you can throw Shaq in there though. He was he yeah. was dominant. You know, he was a dominant big mm -hmm. man and, and you know controlled the game and, and stuff like that. 
Ronnie, I want to say I really appreciate you coming on Player's Choice. We obviously want to do this again, but at yeah. your facility, we want yeah. to do the whole large production. Yeah. Um, you know, we want to talk about the women's game because we have so much to offer, but we want to do it in the most grandiose scale because I think you think what you're doing has been phenomenal. Um, I think you thank you so much for just dropping so many gems for the chat, just talking about financial literacy, just life, you know, just having – you know, you talked about, you know, you've been through things that you've had to overcome. And I think it's been real relatable, a lot of stuff you're talking about. Uh, so I just want to say from me and the Players' Choice community, thank you so much for coming on our platform. Anytime, man. You know, and I'm I'm always for this, man, you know. So yeah. anytime you, you need me, let me know. I can yeah. hop on and we'll definitely do it bigger, though. Yep. Definitely got to come check out the facility. And yeah. I'll be there yeah. tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. I'll be yeah, there tomorrow. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Pull up tomorrow, man. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make that happen for sure. Appreciate it. Chat to the chat. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for coming through. Y'all heard it first. We're going to do this again, live and direct. Rodney, it has been real boss. We appreciate you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yep.